All right, welcome to the video. In this lesson, we are going to look at section 8.5 where we're using intercept form. So um, anytime that we were uh, heard about intercept form uh, with a linear equation, we always thought of the y-intercept. But when we identify a particular um, quadratic with using intercept form, we're actually thinking about the x-intercept. And when you're looking at x-intercepts, of a quadratic, you you're had the possibility of having multiple x-intercepts. And we have to be able to uh, locate them. So if you have a quadratic in a general form like this, a times it by the quantity of x minus p times it by the quantity of x minus q, in that format or in that, in this, the way it's set up, the equation set up, if you set f of x equal to 0, so if it's 0 equals a times by the quantity of x minus p times by the quantity of x minus q, your x-intercepts are going to be the values of p and q. So in, the, in this, the way it's written out, it's going to be p comma 0 and q comma 0. So with that, being able to identify the, the x-intercepts, p and q, uh, which we're able to do. We can also discover what the axis of symmetry is. The axis of symmetry is going to be whatever the value of p plus q divided by 2, because you remember axis of symmetry cuts the parabola in half, so it's, all, it's like you're trying to find the midway point of the way you can fold that particular parabola. So uh, everything else remains the same. You know, it opens up if a is positive, opens down if a is negative. And to be able to find the vertex of, of a um, parabola in this setup, all you would then do is plug whatever values you have for the x-intercepts, and then plug it in for your values of x, and hope, and then if whatever your value a is, and solve it from there, and then that'll get you an idea of what uh, the location of your vertex is. So here's an example that uh, may kind of help us out. So here it says graph f of x equals negative x plus 1 times by the quantity of x minus 5. So, to graph this, I'm going to put down, put in, in a graph what I already know. So, here I have an x-intercept of negative 1, so I got negative 1 comma 0 as one of my x-intercepts, and I have um, that q is 5, so we'll say like, one, two, three, four, five, five comma zero as my other x-intercept. To graph this, I'm going to try to find the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry, to be able to find it in this format, you're going to take the x-intercepts of negative one and add it to five and then divide it by two. So negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that means my axis of symmetry is that x equals 2. So 1, 2. Make my dashed line to show that it's x is 2. Now to figure out where my vertex is, all right, my vertex will be at 2 comma something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this 2 in for this x here and this x here. So I'm going to have a negative 2 plus 1 times by the quantity of 
2 minus 5, and then that's going to give me my vertex. So I got this negative on the outside, 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 minus 5 is negative 3, so negative times by 3 times by negative 3, that gives me positive 9. So my vertex is 2 comma 9. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Plug it in here. A is negative, so it's going downward. It's consistent with those intercepts and where the location is with that vertex. So now they want you to figure out the domain range. Domain is going to be all real numbers. The range in this case will be, you know, the all real numbers except y must be now less than or equal to 9 because your graph is moving downward. Nothing above 9 would be a solution. So write it in like so. Same thing here, graphing it. Um, I encourage you to uh, look at this uh, problem yourselves. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'm more than happy to uh, answer answer those questions um, if you're having confusions or getting stuck somewhere, um, for sure. Here it says they want you to find the zeros of the function. All right. So anytime they want you to find the zeros, it's the same thing as I want you to find the x-intercepts. And what you can do is substitute f of x for 0. And so just say 0 equals x minus 1 times by the quantity of x plus 2. You can use some of your previous knowledge and say, oh, like, oh, this is a zero product property. I can say that x minus 1 is set equal to 0, x plus 2 is set equal to 0. x is going to equal 1, and x will then equal a negative 2. So if you wanted to place this in coordinate form, you could say that your x-intercepts are 1 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. So basically this uh, core concept here is just stating that x minus some value, n is a 0 of the function. So, you know, minus this, you know, it's how it's represented. So that's where the 1 comes in, and then it's the opposite because it's the neg you know plus or negative so that's where you get the minus 2 so now here they they're asking you to find the zeros of the function in this particular uh, case you're going to go 0 equals negative 2x squared minus 10x minus 12 what i would encourage you to do is make sure you can um, make your lead coefficient to be positive because it's an equation because you set it equal to zero uh, you can in essence divide everything by a single number because they're all divisible by two but i would make it negative two so i would divide this by negative two divide this by negative two zero divided by negative two is still zero and now i have just positive x squared plus 5x plus uh, 6. And then factor it out. Uh, parentheses, parentheses, I got x here, x here. Same sign plus. And two values give me a product of 6 times 5, 2, and 3. That means x is going to be negative 2 and x is going to be negative 3. And those are my zeros of the function. Looking at B here, I got 0 equals x minus 1 times by the quantity of x squared minus 16. They're already set up almost in factored complete form. x minus 1, we're good to go. But x squared minus 16 is a sum and difference pattern. So x minus 1 stays the same. This now turns into x plus 4 four times it by the quantity of x minus four, which makes sense because you have a, a degree two, a degree one, there should be three answers. So 
x equals 1, x equals negative 4, and x equals positive 4. You could also combine this and say this is plus or minus 4. So here, again, I would say uh, work on this yourself. Again, if you have questions, please comment down below. Here, it says, it says write a quadratic function in standard form whose uh, graph satisfies the given conditions. They're telling you that the vertex is at negative 3, comma 4, and it passes through... Uh, 9, negative 9, 0, negative 2, 0, and negative 4, comma, 20. So here is how we're going to kind of go about this. So your general quadratic function is going to be f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So our final answer is going to have it be in that format. But we have an advantage because these two coordinates are our x-intercepts. So because those are our x-intercepts, we can actually uh, use, use another, well, this is, this is also a, oh, actually, that's a totally different example. Sorry. I'm just looking at example B. So example A I'll, I'll do next. So for part B, sorry, I'm going backwards. What you're going to do is, or what I would do, is write it out like you did um, with those first equations, the A times it by x minus p times by the quantity of x minus q. So now I have a times it by x plus 9 times it by the quantity of x plus 2. All right, now you're thinking like, okay, now how do I figure out what a is? Well, this is where this coordinate comes into play. This is your x um, coordinate, this is your y coordinate, or your f of x. So what you're going to do now is you're going to replace f of x with 20, and then I got a, and now I got negative 4 plus 9 times by the quantity of negative 4 plus 2. Solve this out, you're going to get a, and then this is allowing us to solve this out and then get it to this form. So now I got 20 is equal to a times it by what negative what negative 4 plus 9 is what 5 this is negative 4 plus 2 is what negative 2 multiply this out so I got 20 is equal to negative 10 a so a is equal to negative 2 so kind of use this format here so I can say that f of x is equal to negative 2 times it by x plus 9 times it by the quantity of x plus 2. Foil this out, so now I got negative 2 times it by the quantity of x squared. So 9 and 2, so it'll be what, plus 11 plus 18, so now I attach the negative 2 to it. So my final answer, or my equation in standard form, will be negative 2x squared minus 22x minus 36. Okay. So looking at part A, sorry, I went backwards. This one tells us that we have a vertex at negative 
negative three comma four, right? So remember, you're still going to use this general general uh, format because they want it in standard form. So that's going to be the uh, final answer when it's all said and done. But despite despite all that, they give us they give us the vertex. So if they give us the vertex, that means the best equation or the best um, the best quadratic equation to go about that is what we looked at in um, the previous section where it is uh, in the a times it by x minus h quantity squared plus k form. So let me get some room here. So the vertex was at negative 3 comma 4. I believe that's what it was. Yeah. So using this formula here, we can uh, we can create a equation from there. And since this was the only thing that was given to us, I'm going to make a 1. So f of x is going to be equal to x plus 3 quantity squared plus uh, k, which is 4. You can expand this. So this is going to be x plus 3 times by the quantity of x plus 3 plus 4. Foil this out, you get x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 4. So my equation in standard form is going to be f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 13. So again, yes, you're going to be given some information. It is, you know, you have to kind of figure it out yourself. What is the best uh, quadratic equation in, in a setup that'll um, give you the best chance of solving it. Again, with this one, finding the zero, so I'm going to take zero equals x cubed minus 4x squared. In this particular instance, you can factor out an x, so this is going to be x times it by x squared minus 4. Okay, I can't do anything else with this x here, but this x, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is right. x squared minus 4 is a uh, sum and difference pattern. So I could say that this is x times by the quantity of x plus 2 times by the quantity of x minus 2. So that means zero product property that tells you my zeros are x equals 0 x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 2. So last example for um, this section is they give us a graph, and they want us to um, since the graph represents a cubic function, which means it's going to be x to the third write out the function so they want us to figure out what the what the um, what the equation is going to be so in a standard form instance it would be like f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d where we use all four terms i'm not i'm not quite sure yet but what we can kind of formulate from this is it has three x-intercepts. It's got one at 0, 0, it's got one at 2, 0, and it's got one at 5, 0. So what I would do is I would use that to my advantage and say, okay, well, kind of write it how we wrote equations in that using intercept form. So I could say a times it by x minus 0, because you have an x-intercept located right there. And it's going to be x minus 2 
and x minus 5. So You know, you have this, you can actually even say like this is like a times by x times by x minus 2 times by x minus 5. So what we really need to figure out is how do we solve for a? Well, we are lucky enough to be given a point of 3 comma 12. So that's going to help us find out what a is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace f of x with 12 because it's the same as y. And then I'm going to substitute everywhere there's an x with 3. So now I got a times it by 3, times it by 3 minus 2, times it by 3 minus 5. So I got 3 here, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Multiply all those together, I get 12 equals negative 6a. So then a is going to be equal to negative 2. So to finish this up, I can go back to this portion of the equation and say, all right, this is going to be f of x equals negative 2 times it by x times it by x minus 2 times it by x minus 5. So then to write this rule, I have to FOIL this out. So now I got negative 2x times it by x squared minus 7x plus 10. And then I distribute the negative 2x from there. So now I got f of x equals negative 2x to the third plus 14x squared minus 20 x and that is being able to use intercept form for quadratics this helps until next time